Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in to Homesteading at the Black Sheep Meadow. I'm Brent. And I'm Amber. And I think we got a good one for you today. We got a wonderful day on the homestead. We hope that y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving and are able to take some time off and spend some time with some family, get all the good stuff, have good meals. Have all your Thanksgiving favorites. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Yep. We're we gonna talk a little bit about my onions and why I'm not happy about them, but that's not the primary purpose of this video. Yep. The primary purpose of this video is it's, to talk about the USDA and how they've turned social media upside down. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> upside down, but there's a lot of people in the frenzy. Uh, we follow a lot of social media platforms and there's just a bunch of people freaking out that the USDA changed their plant hardiness uh, zone. Mm -hmm. uh, we were growing zone 8B, now we're 9A. Right, so there's 13 zones in the United States and they're broke up into half zones, but there's 13 total of them and about half of them have shifted one half zone warmer. So that included us. Mm -hmm. Now, does that correlate to anything concrete for us? No, not really. So our, like, if you go off of that and then for the zone, our predicted first frost was the end of November. Correct. But we had our first frost freeze at the beginning of November this yeah. year. So our first frost actually occurred October 31st and our first freeze occurred the following night uh, or into the early next morning of November 1st. Right. So this is not, I guess that's what we really want to bring to attention to people is that these are not hard, fast rules. Like this is not, oh, it says this, that's what's going to happen. Mother nature will flip that on its head real quick. So it's just a guide, but it's something that you need to be aware of because the maps that you see on, you know, when you're ordering seeds or when you're at the store and you're picking up a package of seeds, those maps have all changed now. And this is the first time it's changed since 2012. So they've got more data. Mm -hmm. They're now using about 30 years worth of data to create these zones. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're getting warmer or we're getting colder or anything like that. It just means that they have more data to go off of. Correct. They originally, the first time in 2012, they had something like 7,000-ish weather stations that were contributing data to this. Now they have 13,000 something that are contributing to it. Mm -hmm. So almost double the weather stations, the mm -hmm. data for them to do this. I think the biggest state that had the biggest amount of change was Alaska. Mm -hmm. Alaska now has more uh, weather stations in it. So I think they went from like six and a half mile to down to a quarter mile mm -hmm. is how you know precise they're able to get it now with these different zoning and planting and that type thing. So regardless what the U.S. government says, <laughs> I don't trust anything they say at all. We don't. Uh, I mean, here we are, we're at the end of November, Central Texas, we are now growing zone 9A. Um, but even though we've had our first frost and our first freeze, I think we were talking about this earlier today, we have more plants and vegetables growing right now than we did even maybe in late spring this year. I, think I mean, to give you an example, we have cabbage, we got lettuce, we got broccoli. Now, Grant, those are all cold weather crops, along with the Brussels sprouts. We're planting onions. We have potatoes. Um, tomatoes. Tomatoes. Squash. Squash. Watermelon. Watermelon is still growing. Uh, you know, all these different things that uh, you would, you know, obviously a watermelon you would expect to see in a summertime crop, but we still have watermelon from seeds that I ate and spit out from our summertime crop. They were volunteer plants. And we thought they were pretty much gone after the November 1st. Mm -hmm freeze that we had but we kind of just sat back and and have let them do their thing and the vine is still strong some leaves have uh, reproduced or grown back have grown back and the watermelons are still solid mm -hmm. so they're not rotten out and they're not anything so we're just yep. we're letting them do their thing <laughs> so obviously the usda uh growing zones uh, with them changing it's got a lot of people disturbed on when they can and can't plant things um really i'm just going to leave it with you need to use your own intuition where you live um you know how well you're going to take care of your plants to give you a prime example we are going to be coming into the first of the year so for us we're going to be seed starting our next year's tomato and pepper plants here before you know it yeah, before too long, and yes. as of right now the tomato and pepper plants that we started december last year are now going on 11 months old so <laughs> Um, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to the effort, what, you know, your ability to control, um, at least some of your plants, being able to cover them up, those type things. Right. And being familiar with your area. And I think a lot of like your windbreak and what direction, and if they're directly getting that North 
faced stuff and being aware of your layout of your garden and mm -hmm. that type thing is going to come into play a lot. I think the biggest thing that people should worry about is going to be when you order some of your stuff that you've now switched your zip code has switched growing zones and it's possible that whether you where you used to order something to say be delivered November 1st your supplier might not ship that now until the middle or later part of November just because your growing zone mm -hmm has changed. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at stuff and you're going into the future that there could be some little roadblocks or hurdles that you'll have to readjust to, adapt to uh, going forward. Now, let's talk about these onions. So I ordered onions and I think we talked about it several times. Um, I know I've mentioned it before. I order my onions from a place in Texas local and I've had really, really, really good luck with them and I, I loved them. Um, I still do. But this was my first batch of onions that I received from them this year. And I actually ordered, then realized I didn't order enough, and then I ordered again. So they're a week behind. But these onions, compared to what I received last year from them, look really sad. They just, they really look sad. So last year when I got my onion starts, the smallest onions in the onion starts were this big. Mm -hmm. And now this is kind of the biggest that I have. Um, part of that, I think, you know, the seed didn't, or the seed, I'm going to call it seed. The onion it plant itself, the start itself, didn't change in the packaging, but the feel and the look of the greenery and the stalks on them has definitely, the quality is definitely not there, but part of that, I think, is because the box had gotten really, really wet. Now, the moment that I got them and the mailman handed it directly to me, they were opened up, they were put on this towel, they were laid out to dry out uh, to get that moisture off of them, but it still did a number on them. So I think some of me not being happy with them has to do with the way the USPS handles mail, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I'm never really happy with anyway. But the other part of it is, is I feel like I just got a really sad bunch of onion starts. So I'm not planting them all because I have another shipment that will arrive this weekend it's either going to be Saturday or Monday that they'll show up. Um, I'm hoping that those bunches will look a lot better and I can use those and these can be uh, the backup onions or the... We're still going to start some of these today. We're going to start some of them today. We're going to, I'm picking through and I'm going to try to find the best ones, the healthiest looking ones. Um, but I'm not overly excited about planting these. Yeah. Just because... They don't look as good as they have in the past. We're gonna get some time lapse in there of us putting these in the in the uh, onion bed over there. So <laughs> okay, let's we go can get do them that. knocked out. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the onion bed, and you can see Amber show them some of your starts versus over here. These are some onion starts that were volunteer plants from last year, which. On our volunteer plants from last year, we're not even sure how that happened because none of our onions bolted or seeded. So when I worked this bed in um, last week, about a week ago, I worked, I reworked this bed. I added some of the Fox Farm soil conditioner to it and reworked it and just cleaned it up. Well, in doing that, I found these four onions growing and none of my onions from last year's bolted. So I'm not sure if these were starts that just never grew last year and made it through everything. Oh. And now we're going... But I, we more than welcome volunteer plants Correct. on our homestead. We love volunteer plants. Yeah. So we will keep them. And like I said, I'm not overly happy with these. So I think I'm just going to plant like these four rows and just kind of continue these out. And then I'm going to save the rest of these and see what the next batches that I get looks like. And I'll let y'all guys know. And when I do the rest of this and we'll plant some in the huge culture mound, we'll take you guys along. So. We're gonna get these planted and then we're gonna get some b-roll for y'all on the rest of our garden vegetables that are still producing wonderfully uh, yeah. for this fall. So hang in there for just a second.
Alrighty folks, so hopefully we got some at least a few things cleared up, at least the way we're thinking about the USDA and their uh, plant hardiness zones. Right, and it's the government, so don't take them too serious. Not at all. <laughs> but uh, we're closing out a year, 2023. We're gonna have a couple of good videos coming up. We've got the six box store garden soil test. It's looking really, really surprising. Yep, and then if y'all are new to the channel and haven't been watching very long, we did our attempting to grow 80% of all of our own food this year, and we're gonna tally up all those numbers, and we're gonna have the results coming up in a video for that. Mm -hmm. And that was this year, and I think we plan on continuing uh, to do a lot of what we did this year next year. Mm -hmm. So especially with the meat side of things. Yep. If, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's gotten a lot easier. We've learned a lot. We've been able to excel in several different categories. And if so. that's the one thing we know we can implore people to do is to try something. Yep. Try something new. Become more self-sufficient, less governable. Mm -hmm. You know, the growing the 80% of all of our own food thing, uh, and I'm going to talk about this in that video, you know, I see so many people complaining about grocery bill costs and it's like I attempt, I try and enforce the, you know, become self-sufficient, do you become more ungovernable? And it's like they won't do it. <laughs> so I don't know, I mean, we'll get there. But if y'all like today's video, go ahead and like. Uh, if y'all like the message that we've been trying to promote, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I guess in the meantime. Like uh, I said, if you have any questions, let us know. Did your growing zone change? Yep, did your growing zone. That's a very good question. And how concerned are you about it? Yep. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. We'll see you next week.